Good afternoon, all of you. Uh, you know, the, the topic is unspoken, but you all have to speak, and we all have to speak to, to speak about the unspoken in that sense. Uh, you know, I have a few questions for, for all of you. Uh, these are not very, very complicated questions. Uh, this is normal quiz question in that sense. Uh, do you know a, a lake was on fire? Tell me the year when a lake was on fire in India. Anyone knows when a lake was on fire in India? Oh well, completely unspoken. Nobody knows when the lake was on fire. Lake was on fire in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, just last week again in Balandur, in Balantur, in Bangalore, the lakes were on fire. Anyway, uh, when was the last time where the air quality index of Delhi actually hit 999? Which year? It's, a, it's an IIT GK question. Which year did the air quality become 999 in Delhi? Anyone? Any guesses? 2017, anyone else? 18? 19? Okay, 16? And all of these are right answers in that sense. Yes, air quality index of Delhi NCR actually hit 999 in 2016, 17, 18, and 19. And it hit 999 because the meter vichara could only read three digits. If it could read four, one, it could perhaps read 1600 or 1700 or perhaps 9999 in that sense. Uh, another GK question, when was the last time uh, a, a river was called out to be very, very polluted and the water not, not drinkable? Which year did you read about a river pollution story in the newspaper? 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, all these things that we talked about last 10 years, of course, several times. The name of the river can change, perhaps because we need newness in our stories. But Ganga is being black, Yamuna is being black. Similarly, Meeti, there is a river called Meeti, by the way, uh, has been black for years together, and we don't really know about it because it's all unspoken. Now, if you, if you look at one thing, something that, I've, that we spoke about, we've spoken about lakes, we've spoken about air, we've spoken about water in that sense. You know, every year what we do, what, the work that I do, I work with, with, an, with a foundation called Swecha. We work on environment, we work with young people, schools, colleges, people, trees, animals. Uh, we make an annual calendar for ourselves to look at which month should we focus on what particular issue. So I made this very nice looking beautiful calendar which, was, which only had months, did not have dates. Had Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And on top it said 2016. And I said fine, in the, in the month of June I'm actually be going to working on, I'll be working on say forest fires. In October I'll be working on air pollution. In December I'll be working on Chennai floods. This is what the plan that I made for 2016. Now December is uh, you know, 2016 was over. I was planning another one-year plan for 2017. It was exactly the same calendar that used again in 2017 and in 2018. And now last month when I set out to make a calendar for myself, for the organization for 2019, my calendar looked the same. The same calendar that I made in 2016 still applies now, which fundamentally means that things have not changed Year after year, you and I wear a mask, read a story about a burning, frothing, fuming lake, or we all read about many of these other environmental issues, like it could be of a huge forest that perhaps is disappearing uh, in Mumbai, or, or could be in any other part of, uh, of Gurgaon. These are all spoken, but foolish people like us, we do not hear it and we think it's unspoken, it's a vow of knowledge that someone needs to come on a TEDx talk and tell you about these issues when it's almost on your front page, on your face. Forget about being on your front page of a newspaper, it's on your face as a mask, as your water, as your real visual of a froth in that sense. Now, uh, some of these issues that we've talked about right now, uh, I, I need to explain a few things to you. Uh, Bangal Bangaluru, uh, Bangalore, uh, it's easier to say Bombay than Mumbai, uh, so Bangalore in that sense, uh, you know, had many, many lakes. The city was actually planned in 1600, the way they had planned the entire thing. There was a natural 
way to preserve water. Almost 300 lakes is what Bangalore had. And by 1970, almost all the lakes have either disappeared or have actually become extremely, extremely polluted. 1,200 million liters of wastewater, municipal wastewater, enters these lakes every day. That's the amount of waste that Bangalore actually creates. We're not even, we only talk about water right now. Imagine this so-called Silicon Val Valley of our country, Bangaluru, right? Uh, the famous citizens, the big flip carts and the big tech companies actually are settled there, but all the reports that we actually have right now says that by 2025, people cannot live in that city. By 2025, citizens will run out of all their water, and the lakes, of course, on, on the roads, there are, there's almost like a mountain of froth almost every second day. Uh, second story that I'm going to share with you is about uh, another modern business capital, one of the you know, richest cities that we actually have in our country, uh, called Gurgaon, uh, you know, there's hardly any water. The trees are disappearing. Just last week, it was actually rated, it got an award, a very fancy Ache Din award for Gurgaon to be the most polluted city in the world, right? Uh, and when we are actually leading and hearing about such amazing statistics called Sabse Powerful Polluted City of, of, of the World, what does the government do? Citizens of our, of our country, citizens of Gurgaon, had set up a forest called Aravali Biodiversity Park, planted almost a lakh and 25,000 trees over years together through citizen action. But government says, oh well, it takes so much time for citizens of Delhi and Gurgaon to reach Manisar. Cars need to move faster and faster, and therefore, let's build a six-lane highway through this entire forest that was not created by the government, that was created by the citizens over their own sweat and love and work. We want a highway. We want a fancy highway. Did people speak? Some people did. Many of you, us, did not speak at all because Gurgaon is a fancy city. Cyber Hub is so amazing. Every restaurant is there and, you know, it's, the nightlife is, is minus the bouncers and, and, a, and a few fights here and there. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful space. Two kilometers from your college uh, is a very, very good place, uh, an area called Sarojini Nagar. Right? I'm sure all of you know about it. I don't know why the smile, why the, why a, you know, cushy of a kind that you actually got, but Saroji Nagar will not be Saroji Nagar anymore. 11,000 trees of Saroji Nagar are to, to be cut so that, and not just Saroji Nagar, but Netaji Nagar and six, five other colonies, 17,000 trees of this particular area are to be cut so that Sarkari Babus can build their houses there, and there could be car park for a lakh cars and a few more malls that could be built in Sarojini Nagar area, in Netaji Nagar area, in Nairoji Nagar area. Many of us spoke about it for months together, but citizens of Delhi perhaps want more malls. Do you need more malls in Delhi or do you need fresh air? Do you actually need more days to live? Do you, do you think it's, it's fashionable to really wear a mask and walk into your classroom? Is there a fashion? I'm sure eventually there will be a brand that will say, oh, well, you know, this one looks cooler. This, this mask is cooler than the other. Or this one is in vogue or the other. I'm sure because you don't have a choice. You will not have a choice but to wear a mask to your potty room. Uh, that's the reality that we all are signing up for. But why are we all not speaking up about these things that are there staring at our face? This is not somebody else's problem. This is not that I've dug out and found, uh, found out from Dantiwada or from villages of, of, say, Tamil Nadu. These are stories of the biggest capitals or biggest cities of our, of our country. Groundwater. The government report says that by 2030, almost 21 major cities of our country will not have groundwater at all. Delhi is going to run out of water in a few years. 
These things that are actually spoken about already is in public domain, and if it does not solicit reaction, response, behavior, some kind of a tuck tuck to you, to bolne ka kya fayda? It's better that is that it's not spoken; it remains unspoken. Uh, I will end with sharing with you something when people spoke. Uh, there's 40% of our India's copper comes from a factory called Sterlite. Um, you know, in 90, 1992, there was a factory that was to be set up in, in, in Ratnagiri in Maharashtra. It, uh, the people there protested. They said they do not want a factory in their back, backyard. They protested. Uh, Ratnagiri had to move the entire factory uh, somewhere, and suddenly Tamil Nadu said, oh, well, come set up this factory in, in my backyard, uh, violating every environmental norms. Sterlite was actually set up uh, in, in Tutikore in, in, in Tamil Nadu in 94. Since then, several times, several cases, every rule have been violated. They've been challenged, shut down by the Supreme Court, by the High Court, by the pollution control boards, because people there, the poor people there, the farmers and, 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 and the citizens, actually were, you know, every week there were cases of breathlessness or, and, and sometimes cancer. Many people, just last year, it was March, in fact, last year, they said enough is enough. They had actually protested earlier as well. They got together and they were protesting against this factory that was killing them. It wasn't about anything else. It was actually killing them and they started protesting on the streets of Tutikorin. What happened? There were 13 people who were murdered by the police in broad daylight for speaking up. And they were speaking up for clean air, clean water, and a right to live. Now, two things here about everything that I've spoken right now, two things. One, you know, we cannot leave the business of speaking to the poorest of the poor. Poorest of the poor do not have the agency. We have to, people like yourself and myself and all of us who have more agency, who speak English, who eat burger, who actually have, uh, have better lifestyle, can afford to stand up. We need to speak up for ourselves and also for the poorest and the poorest and the marginalized of our, of our country, because un, if we do not speak up, there's no planet. You know, you can, you can imagine that perhaps you can buy a lot of these things, buy fresh air, but our, our air doesn't come from an air purifier. It will actually, it comes from trees. Your, your water does not come from, from, a, from a water purifier or an aqua guard. It still comes from your rivers and your underground water. You need to go, you know, education, our education needs to be applied at the right place, and we all need to speak up and hear up and do things around us. And this is no romance that I'm talking about. This is not a romantic world that we're trying to imagine. This is the selfish world in which so that my family members do not die because of cancer and your children don't wake up with, with asthma. That's my only, only call. And that's why I speak today the unspoken. Thank you.